All right, more probability today. We're going to be talking about probability of compound events today where more than one thing is happening. So, independent events are events that do not influence each other. Like if I say, hey, you're going to flip a coin and you're going to roll a die, a die, those would not have any influence on what happens in the other. Those are independent events. That's the first kind of event we'll be talking about today. Okay, try this. You're eating lunch and will drink either water or juice. You will eat pizza, a salad, or a burger. If all the choices are equally likely, what is the probability that you have juice and a salad? And I want you to see if you can figure this out by yourself, and then I wonder if you can actually discover a rule too. So go ahead and give this a try and we'll talk about how to apply this. Okay, one thing I like to think about here is that we might be, sorry, I got that a little funny right now. Um, I don't know if that looks any better. It's like it's getting cut off a bit. Um, we have maybe a possibility that a picture might be helpful or some sort of a diagram or a uh, list. So I have my pizza, salad, and burger, and I know that with that pizza, or salad, and burger, I could have water would be a choice. So water could go with any of these three options. And juice could also go with any of these three options. So you're going to notice, I hope, that we have six choices altogether. Out of these choices, we're trying to look for that we um, have juice in a salad. So one of those choices, this one right here, is juice in a salad. So one choice out of six happens to be the one thing that we're looking for, so one six is our probability. What I kind of want you to notice here is that we had two options for a drink, water or juice, and we had three options for the main course. To find out how many total options we got, I hope you can kind of see here, since water goes with three things, juice goes with three things, all we're really doing is multiplying two by three where I'm getting my six choices. So we're going to use that concept of multiplication to help us simplify probability that gets kind of complicated so we don't always have to make a list or a diagram or a picture. Okay, so here's the rule. If A and B are independent events, probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. So that's how you read that notation. If you see something like this, P parentheses A. In probability terms, we say the probability of A. Okay, so that might be useful for your notation. So if we're finding the probability that both things occur, we're going to multiply their individual probabilities. Okay, so here we go. Suppose you roll two number cubes. What's the probability that you roll an odd number on the first cube and a multiple of three on the other cube? Okay, so you could try to do a list or a diagram or something like that, but we're going to try to use our rule to simplify this up a little bit. So what we're going to do is look at each probability separately. So I'm going to look at this, the probability that you roll an odd number on the first cube, and then I'm going to look at the other event separately, a multiple of three on the other cube. So first of all, if I look here, an odd number on the first cube, well, I have one, three, or five, so I have three choices out of six for the first cube. And it's usually pretty helpful if you reduce in advance because then you don't have to deal with that so much later. So I have a half a chance to roll an odd number on the first cube. For a multiple of three on the other cube, the only multiples of three I have are three and six. So I have two choices out of six. And again, I'm going to reduce that, and I'm going to get a probability of one-third. To find the probability that both of these things happen, we are going to multiply their individual probabilities. So I got one half times one third, and I find that I have a one out of six chance of getting an odd number on the first cube and a multiple of three on the other cube. Okay? And by the way, the probability is not always one six. It just happened to be the first two times. Okay, let's look at this problem. Suppose you have three quarters and five dimes in your pocket. You take one coin out and then put it back in. Then you take out another coin. What's the probability that you take out a dime and then a quarter? So we're looking for the probability that you get a dime and then a quarter. So we're going to look at this separately again. So I want to find just the probability that I get a dime. 
So the probability of a dime, well, there's five dimes in my pocket, and there are eight total coins, so the probability that I get a dime is five-eighths. Okay, now I put that coin back in, so I still have eight coins. So now I'm looking for the probability of a quarter. So I still have all my eight coins, and this time three of them are quarters. So my probability of getting a quarter is three-eighths. If I'm going to find the probability that both events occur, I'm going to multiply their probabilities. So I have five-eighths times three-eighths. Okay, and I get 15 out of 64, and that cannot be reduced, so I'm done. All right, so we're going to look at some dependent events, too. Dependent events are events that do influence each other. So whatever happens the first time, that affects the probability of the second event. When we're solving probability of dependent events, it's really, really similar to solving independent events where we're going to multiply their probabilities. But we have to be a little careful here because if, prob if A and B are dependent events, then probability of A then B equals the probability of A times the probability of B after A. So we have to pretend that A occurs and now figure out the new probability for B. Okay, and then we're going to multiply those probabilities. I'll show you what I'm talking about um, as we work out a problem together. Okay, so same as the last problem. Similar. Suppose you have three quarters and five dimes in your pocket. You take one coin from your pocket, but this time you do not replace the coin. Okay, so you take the coin out, and now you take a second coin, but you don't, you haven't put the first coin back in. So now I want to know what's the probability of first taking out a dime and then out a, a quarter. So when we're coming up with individual probabilities this time, so my dime's first. So probability of a dime, it's still 5 out of 8. Okay, but now when I look at my probability of a quarter, of pulling a quarter out, you're going to notice that I have three quarters, but I don't have five dimes anymore. I've pulled one out, so I only have four dimes. So I've got seven coins. So my probability of a quarter is three out of seven. Okay? But again, I'm going to multiply these two probabilities to find the probability that both events occur. And I've got five-eighths times three-sevenths. So I've got 15 out of 56. And I can't reduce that. Okay? Um, look at this problem. I'm going to have you try the first part on your own and see if you can get it. Okay. So a teacher must select two students for a conference. The teacher randomly picks names from among three freshmen, two sophomores, four juniors, and four seniors. Okay. So your job, try this one on your own and see if you can get it. What is the probability that a junior and then a senior are chosen? So probably that a junior is chosen first and then a senior is chosen second. Okay. Um, Give that a try, then come back and see if you did it right. All right, I'm looking for the probability of a junior first. So I'm going to have to do a little adding here, but a junior, I have four juniors, so I know it's four. Out of, I need to figure out how many people there are. So there's three and two and four, that's nine and 13. So I've got four out of 13 juniors. Okay, now I need to know what the probability is that I get a senior. And remember, I've already picked that junior, so this is, these are dependent events. So this time, when I look for my seniors, I still have four seniors, but I only have 12 people left to pick from. And again, I would highly recommend that you reduce this before you multiply, because it's just going to make your life easier. Okay, so we have, in this case, we're going to multiply our probabilities again. I've got 4 thirteenths times 1 third. And I get 4 out of 39. And that can't be reduced. So that's my probability that I get a junior and then a senior. Okay, try this one on your own. It has a little bit of a twist. And I want to see if you can get it. Okay, so looking here, what is the probability that two freshmen are chosen? So you need to think of this to get it right as two different events. Those are probably that a freshman's chosen first and then a freshman's chosen section or second, sorry. So the probability that a freshman on the first try, so this is going to be like the first occurrence, I have three freshmen, and remember I had 13 people. Okay, so three out of 13 was my probability that the very first time I pick somebody, that person's a freshman. 
The second time, the probability that I get a freshman, okay, you need to be extra careful here because now, remember, I pulled a freshman out. They got picked the first time. So now I only have two freshmen left. And that's going to be important. So I have two freshmen left out of the 12 remaining people. Again, I'm going to go ahead and reduce that in advance. So I got one sixth. So I have 3 thirteenths times 1 sixth. And because I don't really feel like multiplying 13 by 6 in my head, well, it's not really that hard, 78, but I'm going to use a strategy called cross-reducing first, where I'm going to reduce this 3 and the 6 because I'll divide them both by 3, kind of reducing in advance to make that 1 over 2. And then this is pretty easy for me to multiply across. So I've got 1 times 1 is 1 out of 26. And if you had put 3 over 78 and then reduce that, that's fine. You'll get the same thing. 1 <clears throat> That's my probability that I get two freshmen. Okay, so just to think about, I want you to kind of come up with a, something in your head. How does finding the probability of independent events compare to find the probability of dependent events? How are they similar? How are they different? Something to think about and make sure that you can understand that before you come into class to work on the problems.